Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of The Wild Side, and I am introducing you to a cute, cuddly, furry creature all the way from Brazil. Look at this. This is a Brazilian white-kneed tarantula, and we're taking a walk on the wild side of tarantula. <laughs> Everyone, this is a Brazilian white kneed tarantula native to the Amazon in South America, specifically the country of Brazil. Now, white kneed tarantulas blend in beautifully with the, the, the undergrowth of the rainforest. They get under leaves, they get under rocks, they get under logs. Now, they are an arachnid, a spider. Don't worry, I'm not going to get any superpowers if I'm bitten by this tarantula. However, I could have something happen to me if I'm bitten by this tarantula. These animals have two hypodermic-like needle fangs, which they use for defense and they use for feeding. Now, right under the body here, these large fangs would go into a prey item such as a cricket. Now that cricket would then have that venom and go into its body and the venom's reaction with the internal parts of a cricket turn the insides of a cricket into a milkshake. And then through the fangs, they suck out the insides of the cricket. That's how they feed. Now, as a defense mechanism, these animals can also do what's called a dry bite, where they bite into a predator but inject no venom whatsoever. Now, if it chose to use its venom on me, it could be pretty bad, if I'm allergic. Now, am I allergic to tarantula bites? I don't know, I haven't figured that out yet. That's why medical professionals are standing by right here behind the camera. Now, if I'm not allergic, it's gonna be like a very, very severe bee sting and I should seek some medical attention just to keep them in the loop. Now, many of you see this tarantula and go, oh, be careful, it could jump. Especially if you see one out in the natural environment, it could jump on me. It could swing in its web and try to land on me. No, folks, these animals' legs are not meant for shock absorption. In fact, they have an exoskeleton, which means their skeleton is on the outside of their body. And every few months or so, they actually molt. They'll crack open their body right here on top and they'll emerge from their old body and their new body will then begin to harden, leaving behind a perfect replica of themselves in a husk-like fashion. Now look right here at their eyes, look at that. They've got eight eyes, they can see all the way around their bodies. They've got those eight legs and they have this very large abdomen here. Now the abdomen is covered in hair. Now I know Brazilians are known for their waxing, but there is no need to wax the hair off of this tarantula here. In fact, those are defense mechanisms. These two back legs will rub the abdomen in, in the need of protecting itself. And those hairs will travel into the air, into the nostrils of whatever predator is trying to hunt them or hurt them. Those hairs act like irritants, making the predator feel like there's nothing but fiberglass shoved in their nostrils, helping the tarantula to escape and run away. Now, as they run, they'll leave a little trail of web right out of the back here. Look at the web. Can you see the web that's going up my arm here? Look how they leave this, probably really hard to see, but look how they leave this trail of webbing everywhere they go. Look right here. You can see there on my arm. That trail of webbing helps them not only find out where they've been, but that also helps them to be uh, able to feel a predator coming out. So I'm gonna trip the wire. Oh, that lets her know she's gotta get out of here. Now, these incredible little animals feed, like I said, on crickets, but they can also feed on other insects. They can feed on worms. There are some tarantulas, like the bird eater, that can grow so large, it could even consume small baby birds. Look for bird eaters in an upcoming episode of The Wild Side. Uh, I can't wait to do the Goliath. It's gonna be fantastic. Now, these animals are very, very popular pet items. Why is that? They require very little daily care. Just a little bowl of water, some crickets from time to time, and handle it. A lot of parents actually choose to get tarantulas for their children, tarantulas, roaches, and other insects, because they help teach the children responsibility. Now I have to advise you that if you're gonna make any animal a member of your family, you do your research first, and please don't get anything that you're not gonna be comfortable handling wholeheartedly like a tarantula here. Thank you for tuning in this week to The Wild Side. As always, please subscribe right here on YouTube and share our videos with all your family and friends. 
I have to give a very, very special thank you to Dr. John Ramirez and Critterville, a San Antonio-based outreach that helps to educate the public about creepy crawlies, just like tarantulas, and other animals that you may go, ah, when you see for the first time. Go to Critterville's Facebook page and give them a like. I know Dr. John would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for partnering with The Wild Side. All right, for this week, this tarantula and I are going to go spin a web together. We'll talk to you next week when we highlight some of your favorite species. As always, conservation rules, stay wild, and we'll see you next week on The Wild Trail here on The Wild Side.